Hi there! Hope that you have been enjoying the information and the episodes that I have been sharing uh, on my uh, Instagram page, on YouTube and on the Huckster website. Today I'm going to share with you some important points uh, regarding pop-up stores and more specifically we're going to look at the 10 most important things that you should keep in mind when opening a pop-up store. Every time you engage in a pop-up store project you have to plan well uh, and you have to decide on many important points that will assure the success of your project. We have looked at many aspects of pop-up stores and many important things that you should keep in mind when you are uh, looking at opening a pop-up store, such as the concept, the idea, the location, the timing, the target audience, the type of collections or offerings that you are going to highlight in that pop-up store, and so on. So today I'm going to only uh, look at 10 important points with you regarding uh, to planning uh, a pop-up store's opening. First and foremost, you have to keep in mind the important message that you need to deliver uh, when proposing your pop-up store. What is the main message, the main idea that your customers are going to take away with them when they have visited this pop-up store? This main idea should summarize the entire pop-up store and the entire pop-up store's project. So think of that and let this main idea or main message be at the heart of conceiving your pop-up store. So first, what is the main message that you want to deliver from your pop-up store? We have talked about the importance of strategies and objectives. Do not develop pop-up stores haphazardly. Don't just engage in pop-up stores projects because they are cool, because they are trendy, or because everyone is doing pop-up stores today. Let your pop-up store be driven by objectives that are measurable and that are quantifiable. We need to have clear objectives in order to make sure that our pop-up store met them and that we have succeeded at making something different through this pop-up store's objective. Let me give you some examples about objectives. An objective could be to raise awareness or maybe to increase sales. An objective could also be uh, enhancing the brand's identity. An objective could be launching a new product or a new collection, etc. You have to define one or two objectives related to your pop-up store project and you have to conceive your pop-up store in a way that will help you meet those objectives. I highlight that idea again and would invite you to think of the following. If you want to sell through your pop-up store, what type of merchandise should you be including? At what quantities? At what price points? How are you going to make this merchandise available to your target audience? These questions should help you then not only have an objective, but design your pop-up store in order to meet that specific objective. The third point is who is your target audience? Now, this is crucial in any project related to any brand. Why do we need to develop a pop-up store? Is really important, but it is crucial to uh, answer the question, who is the pop-up store going to be talking to? Who's my target audience? If you 
understand the importance of the question, you would be able to design a pop-up store that could directly speak to your target audience. Speaking directly to the target audience would mean designing the space, the atmosphere, the communications, the messages, and everything that you have to insert or include in that pop-up store in order to engage your customer and make him feel connected to your pop-up store and make him feel at a closer distance uh, with the brand. The fourth point related to opening a pop-up store is the location. Where are you going to pop up? Location is important in retail and has always been important to retail. In the case of pop-up stores, location is also crucial. It is key to the success of your pop-up store. As location would be a meeting point between your brand and the target audience. If you're also thinking of going and looking at new or secondary target audiences, locations are also choices that should be calculated in order for you to get in touch with that target audience. Where they are, where they hang out, where are they going to pass by, for example, from their journey from work to home and vice versa, and where are you going to be placed at that right moment when the customer would be most inclined to visit your pop-up store. Think of location and think of the importance of location in terms of your objectives. If you have been watching uh, the FMR retailing episodes, you would have surely uh, gone through the episode where we explained decisions regarding location choices. We're going to explain that point in details in future episodes or future uh, live sessions. The fifth point related to the most important things to keep in mind when opening a pop-up store is when are you going to pop up or the timing related to the pop-up store's appearance. Timing is important because popping up at the right place and the right moment would make your pop-up store very desirable and very wanted. And this is the effect that you would hope to, as a brand, you would hope to extract from your target audience. So when there are many um, uh, seasonal uh, dates that are interesting uh, to a brand, for example, the period of Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's, maybe during uh, bank holidays in May or the 1st of May, Mother's Day, summer vacations, you name it. There are many important dates uh, during which a brand could appear. However, I would uh, uh, invite you to think again of your brand identity and the type of offering that you uh, propose to your target audience. If your brand sells products that are rather summery or wintry, you might as well think of the timing related to a summery or wintry event during which you would pop up and propose your event or your collection. So, we cannot just say that there are five or six events uh, or dates that every brand should appear uh, during uh, to do their pop-up stores. The timing is very related to your pop-up store's identity and to the offering that you wish to propose during that specific time uh, through this pop-up event. So, we are going to also think about not only the timing, but for how long I'm going to stay in that location 
uh, in that pop-up store. We know that pop-up store are ephemeral in nature. They are defined as types of stores that appear and disappear during a very short period of time. But what is a short period of time? Is it a couple of hours, a couple of days, a couple of months or a year? So again, this depends on the objectives, the initial, the initial objectives that you have uh, set before developing the pop-up store and what you wish to extract from that pop-up store as a result. I need to invite you uh, to think about the importance of timing as excitement might be diluted if your pop-up store stays for longer periods of time. Again, there have been many examples of pop-up stores of developing brands or mature or developed brands. And in mature or developed brands, there have been also two uh, categories, those who are luxury brands or other mass brands. Why am I explaining this idea to you? It's because that luxury brands tend to do lots of pop-up stores, but their timing is slightly elongated more than startup brands, creative brands, or brands that are being developed. Luxury brands can tend to stay in a pop-up store for almost a year where our other types of brands stay in a pop-up store for an average of couple of weeks to a month. You do the math and you see which period uh, fits you with your brand's objectives and identity better. I need to highlight another important thing related to timing. If you are selling products in the pop-up store, and you are selling merchandise that is specific to that pop-up store, such as special editions or limited editions, you need to make sure that your stock meets with the timing or the duration of the pop-up store. This is very important, as it's not possible for you to stay in a pop-up store and sell merchandise if you do not have the stock to sell. So do not make that mistake. Make sure you calculate everything in very uh, detailed precisions before you engage in uh, uh, hiring the location for uh, X or Y periods of time. We move on to number seven of the 10 most important things to keep in mind when opening up a pop-up store. What budget would you allocate for this pop-up store project? Pop-up stores could be uh, our outlets to creative, crazy uh, uh, concepts. The concept could be uh, crazy and could look very nice on pen and paper, but do I have the budget to realize it? This is the question of most of the brands. Budgeting could not uh, be in the hands of every brand. Therefore, the brand might have to do some concessions in terms of maybe design, concept creation, personalization, etc. So you have to make sure that your budget also goes hand in hand with your concept and your concept serialization or execution. I'm going to, uh, to, to be uh, uh, looking at that uh, idea in further details in other uh, lives or uh, stories. The eighth more, most important thing to keep in mind when opening up a pop-up store is related to communications. How are you going to communicate your pop-up store? Communications has to also go hand in hand with your objectives and it has to communicate your pop-up store before it appears 
it has to reinforce the communications during its appearance and it has to wrap up information related to your pop-up store after your pop-up has uh, uh, closed or after you have wrapped up your project. So, in terms of communications, you have to design the message. Also, the main message of communications have, has to go hand in hand with the concept or the takeaway message of your pop-up store. Remember the first idea that we discussed uh, at the beginning. And communications has to move your customer from social sites uh, to the store and vice versa. Remember that uh, if you're working in an omni-channel uh, context, meaning if you have several outlets such as a physical store or a website and you're adding to that a pop-up store, communications have to also help the customer make their journey around all of these available outlets. Now we uh, reach our ninth most important thing that we should keep in mind when opening up a pop-up store and that is the pop-up store's design or the atmospheric design. Remember that uh, pop-up stores have to be different than traditional stores. They have to be engaging they have to allow interaction of the customer between uh, and, and, uh, um, and they have actually uh, to create openings for the customer to engage with the brand within uh, the pop-up store's atmosphere or context and you have to create those touch points in order for the customer to feel free to engage with the brand and the customer has to be able to feel free to engage with other customers visiting the pop-up store, hence the importance of a pop-up store's social dimension. I have to highlight as well that the pop-up store's atmosphere can be very simple in terms of conception and material it has used. However, the allocation of the atmosphere and the concept goes hand in hand with the, the pop-up store's brand identity and the target audience and it is created in a way that makes the customer feel at home and feel that he can co-create his experience uh, with the brand. I need to remind you again uh, that uh, the pop-up store's atmosphere will help you um, help the customer stay longer and will help you collect vital information out of the exchange that you have uh, uh, created between you, the brand, and the target audience. And this information is very important and you should make sure that you consider every piece that the customer shares with you as it would enhance your brand uh, and your brand's decision uh, regarding uh, the collection or uh, anything that you have presented or have been testing in that pop-up store for future decision making related to your brand. Finally, the tenth most important thing that you should keep in mind when opening a pop-up store is how will you engage with your target audience. So when we have set up an atmosphere that is inviting, we are making sure that our customer feels at home and our customer has a voice. Your uh, pop-up store's atmosphere has to allow your customer to share his voice about his experience in that pop-up store. Make sure that you are connected and your customer can be connected whilst he's visiting your pop-up store. It's crucial to have a Wi-Fi connection in your pop-up store. It's very important to link via your communications, your pop-up store to your social media sites and other sites that you are having. You have to uh, have a specific hashtag or QR codes or any other links uh, through which your customer can share his opinion or his feelings or his journey throughout his pop-up store's visit. 
maybe the customer would um, take a selfie in store and upload uh, the image uh, on his online site. And this will yield other uh, returns and comments from his network. Those people would be curious uh, to come and visit your pop-up store and hence the engagement that has been created. And the most important thing that this engagement that you create in store should deliver the message out there uh, on uh, all the social media sites of your brand, other brands and your target audiences and their uh, social platforms. We hope that uh, through this engagement, uh, the pop-up store's message would spread virally. By this, I would have presented to you the 10 most important things that you sh should keep in mind when um, planning to open a pop-up store. I will be sharing uh, the 10 points with you uh, in uh, this Instagram story a little bit uh, later this evening. However, I would invite you to visit uh, the YouTube channel uh, or our websites for more information on pop-up stores and ephemeral stores. Hope to see you soon in another uh, live to discuss other important aspects related to pop-up stores or ephemeral retail. And by that, I wish you a happy afternoon. Thank you for joining. I wave to all of those who have joined me uh, during this session.